the next topic with which we'll be starting with in the immunity chapter is amyloidosis something which is very important when it comes to your exams questions mcqs are certain be it one liners image based or clinical vignettes we'll be dealing with all of those let's first understand the entire concept behind amyloidosis so if i ask you in a simple term what exactly is amyloid or what is the definition of amyloid all of you will agree that amyloid happens to be a protein right but it's not any regular protein it happens to be a it happens to be a misfolded protein so i'll be talking about a lot of diseases you'll gradually understand why is it being misfolded so it's a misfolded protein and this protein tends to always accumulate outside the cells that's quite an important point when we talk about amyloid it's an extra cellular misfolded protein so look at the keywords out here it's always going to deposit outside it's a misfolding and it's a proteinaceous substance extracellular misfolded protein that is amyloid so obviously what will be coming to your mind is when does this situation arise in our body so please remember amyloidosis is of two types primary amyloidosis and secondary amyloidosis in primary amyloidosis we have something called multiple myeloma coming into our place and in secondary all the others are going to come so now let me just tell you a basic concept very very quickly and then i'll proceed i whatever diseases i'm going to tell you a table this there is an entire table that you have in front of you in this entire table of amyloidosis please remember whatever disease i talk about the situation will be that in all of these diseases some of the other protein will increase like in multiple myeloma uh, there will be an increase in all the immunoglobulins for example in alzheimer's disease there will be an increase in beta plaques in medullary carcinoma there's an increase in calcitonin so whichever disease you're talking about or over here in all these diseases there's going to be an increase in some of the other protein so whenever there's an increase in some of the other protein you'll say ma'am this increase is happening maybe in the blood how will it get deposited in the tissues in the tissues it's going to get deposited in the form of amyloid that is the entire concept out here so well having said that let's take the example of primary amyloidosis under primary amyloidosis we studied multiple myeloma so do you all remember in multiple myeloma if you all know it's a tumor of what multiple myeloma is a tumor of plasma cells right so if there's an increase in the plasma cells that automatically means that there's going to be an increase in the immunoglobulins which also means that you know these are not going to be normal immunoglobulins it's a cancer at the end of the day multiple myeloma is a cancer so that basically means that these immunoglobulins are going to be something weird they're going to be something abnormal the light chains are going to be much more than the heavy chains which again means that these light chains are then going to deposit in the kidney and that is what you call as myeloma kidney that is what you call as myeloma kidney so see look at this again there's a protein that protein is light chain that is depositing in some tissue so can i call it a myeloid can i call it a l type of a myeloid l will stand for light chain and a will stand for a myeloid in this case so whenever repeating whenever there's an increase in some of the other protein it will deposit in the tissue in the form of amyloid so over here it's a l type of amyloid now think logically when this was depositing in the kidney i called it myeloma kidney a l type of myeloma kidney the same light chain when it starts going out into the urine what is that known as it's a very famous condition known as bent's jones proteinuria it's a very famous condition called as bent's jones proteinuria what is that protein coming out into the urine which protein am i talking about we are talking about the light chains having said that similarly like i can very safely write over here that in a case of multiple myeloma the type of amyloid is going to be al where a stands for amyloid and l stands for light chain well having said that now when we move on to the earlier ones all the others that i'm talking about over here all of them are going to come under secondary amyloidosis all these are examples of secondary multiple myeloma was an example of primary so let's look at the secondary ones the first three chronic inflammations cancers and familial mediterranean fever repeating chronic inflammations like chronic pancreatitis chronic appendicitis chronic osteomyelitis any chronic inflammation that i'm talking about these chronic inflammations but remember 
except chronic bronchitis any chronic inflammation in the body except chronic bronchitis that is going to show you which kind of amyloid that is going to show you AA kind of amyloid all these three conditions that I'm talking about will show you AA kind of amyloid so number one is chronic inflammations the second one happens to be cancers and what cancers am I talking about any cancer but Hodgkin's lymphoma and renal cell carcinoma have been two very important ones listed Hodgkin's and renal cell carcinoma they also show you which kind of amyloid AA third one familial Mediterranean fever there's going to be fever patient is going to have fever it's running in the families why is it running in the families anything that's running in the families will have a genetic problem what is the gene mutated in familial Mediterranean fever FMF that is familial Mediterranean fever gene mutation is pyrin gene mutation so pyrin pyro word will remind me of fever right in all these three conditions chronic inflammations cancers and familial Mediterranean fever there is deposition of which amyloid AA so you will ask me ma'am first A I know everywhere the first A stands for amyloid what is the next A over here standing here for so AA means amyloid associated do you want to know how did this come down how did AA form so I'll explain that with the help of a very simple thing and a very simple flow chart so whenever for example in the body there is any chronic inflammation like chronic osteomyelitis chronic pancreatitis or in the body there are cancers like renal cell carcinoma or a patient is suffering from familial Mediterranean fever you know what's common in them in all of them there's going to be an increase in interleukins especially interleukin 6 one bhi hota hai 6 bhi hai but especially interleukin 6 that interleukin 6 then goes and acts on the liver and from the liver what is released is a protein called SAA what is SAA SAA stands for serum amyloid associated SAA stands for serum amyloid associated SAA so well Having said that, now please, please remember that we are going to now come back and understand that in all of these, the kind of amyloid mentioned was AA. So that's going to be the same thing, serum amyloid associated. Coming to the next one, medullary carcinoma thyroid. Medullary carcinoma, what is increased? In medullary carcinoma thyroid, calcitonin is increased. So the kind of amyloid getting deposited is A-cal. Cal is standing for what? A for amyloid, cal for calcitonin. Okay. Coming to the other two that are mentioned, Alzheimer's disease and hemodialysis. Now look at the difference. In Alzheimer's disease, the type of amyloid is A beta and in hemodialysis is A beta 2M. What do I mean by that? Do you all recall and when you will go and read the CNS chapter, you will see that in Alzheimer's disease, there is an elevation of something called beta plaques. Beta plaques are formed in the brain. So from beta plaques, we have made the amyloid A beta. Whereas in a case of hemodialysis, what is beta 2? Beta 2 M stands for beta 2 microglobulin. Beta 2 microglobulin, which basically means there's an increase. People who are undergoing hemodialysis, people who have these kidney failure and they undergo hemodialysis, they have an increase in beta 2 microglobulin. Why? So this is not a very common thing. You will obviously want to ask me that ma'am why is that being seen nowadays but I want to explain that to you. Uh, now we have like a lot of machines, advanced machines so it might not be that common but till quite a short while ago it was. So what exactly happens in hemodialysis patients? So you will say ma'am hemodialysis ka jo machine hai, hemodialysis machine is something like a Hemodialysis machine is basically something like a, uh, you know, like an artificial kidney. It's going to purify the blood. So whenever we have a patient who's undergoing hemodialysis, you've got a cannula that has been put over here. And from the cannula, all the blood is going to go into the machine. From this machine, all the pure blood, all the pure blood is then going to return. So from the cannula, so this machine is basically like an artificial kidney. That's going to purify the entire blood and the pure blood is going to go back. But what can this machine not take out? The filters in this machine, they can't remove beta 2 microglobulin from the blood. So the patient's blood will get rid of all the impure things. But will it be able to get rid of beta 2 microglobulin? No. 
this patient will have an increase in beta 2 microglobulin in his blood because that is not being removed by the hemodialysis machine. Exactly what I was telling you. This patient will have an increase in beta 2 microglobulin in the blood and that is why they call it A beta 2. So now in the exam, so that you don't get confused, in Alzheimer's it is A beta and in hemodialysis A beta 2. How have I learnt it? Alzheimer's is a brain problem. We have only one brain. Hemodialysis is a kidney problem and we have two kidneys. So one brain, one beta, two kidneys, two beta. That is how I have learnt it. I wish we had more than one brain but abhi. One brain, one beta, so A beta in Alzheimer's. Two kidneys, so A beta 2 in hemodialysis. Coming to the last two set of diseases, systemic senile amyloidosis and familial amyloidotic polyneuropathy. What do we have in this? In both of them, the kind of amyloid getting deposited is ATTR. In both of them, it is ATTR. So, I want to explain this also to you with the help of a flowchart first. That whenever we are talking about TTR, let's just start our story with TTR. What is TTR? If I write the full form of TTR, it stands for trans thigh retin. Trans thigh retin. Break the word. What do you mean by trans? It stands for transport. It's a transport protein. TTR is a transport protein. What is it transporting? Thai for thyroid. It's going to transport all the thyroid hormones. And retin, it's going to transport retinoic acid, vitamin A. So it's going to be a transport protein for two things. It's a transport protein for thyroid hormones and retinoic acid, that's vitamin A. So this everyone has, all of us have this. But if someone ends up having more and more and more of TTR, means quantity problem. If someone ends up having excessive quantity of TTR, that person is going to then have something known as systemic senile amyloidosis. Look at the word over here, systemic senile amyloidosis. Amyloidosis will tell me that okay, there's a kind of amyloid. Which kind of amyloid? A TTR. A for amyloid, TTR for transthyretin. It's a quantity problem, too much of quantity. So amyloidosis means A TTR. Senile means this is going to happen in very old individuals, old age. And systemic means that many organs will be affected. Having said that, remember the other possibility is the quantity of TTR remains the same but there's a quality problem. There's a mutation in TTR. Please remember in terms of quantity everything is going to be the same. The quantity is going to be the same only a mutation will occur, only a quality problem will occur. When such a scenario arises that condition is known as Familial amyloidotic polyneuropathy. That condition is known as familial amyloidotic polyneuropathy. Well, having said that, how do I learn it? Obviously, it's going to be a nerve problem. Nerve problem running in the families. Familial amyloidotic polyneuropathy. But how to not get confused? Because you will say, ma'am, in both of them, the type of amyloid is ATTR. Where is the difference? The difference is in one of them, the problem with ATTR is the quantity problem. In the other one, the quantity is not a problem, the quality is a problem. So, how do I learn this? Please remember, when you have systemic senile, senile means old age. Too much of age, too much of quantity. That's how I learnt it. Too much of age, too much of quantity. So, the ATTR over here is a quantity issue. It's an increase in the quantity. Whereas when I say familial amyloidotic polyneuropathy, nerve, NM, NM, saath saath aata hai in the alphabetical chain, N for nerve, M for mutation. So the nerve problem is a mutation in TTR that has happened. So repeating, too much of age and too much of quantity is going together. Nerve and M, N and M, mutation of ATTR that is going together. So that's the final table guys. Which disease shows you which kind of amyloid? So repeating, for multiple myeloma, it is AL, light chain. For inflammation, cancers and FMF, it is AA, amyloid associated. For medullary carcinoma, ACAL, calcitonin. ATTR depends whether I'm talking about quantity problem, it is senile amyloidosis. If I'm talking about mutation problem, it is nerve related. When I talk about A beta, one brain Alzheimer's disease, A beta 2, Two kidneys, hemodialysis. 